As we continue our study on uh, the study of last things in the book of Revelation, I wanted to take the time today to look at the judgment seat of Christ. That would be the judgment of the Christians, uh, not of the lost. This is not a judgment that determines whether or not one is saved or not saved. This is a judgment of the Christians. And uh, this will take place right after the rapture. We see the events as they unfold, and uh, we looked already a couple uh, sessions ago at the fact that the rapture is the next thing really on the schedule of, of last events. And while we often look at last events and we kind of get um, uh, focused sometimes on all the things that we know that are going to take place during the tribulation, uh, for example, we have a lot of information in the book of Revelation concerning the Antichrist. Uh, concerning that seven-year period of the Great Tribulation, the false prophet, uh, the, the wrath of God being poured out in the judgments, uh, the mark of the beast, uh, the number 666, all those different things that kind of uh, get our attention. Uh, the bottom line is, if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we're not going through those things. We have nothing to do with those things. We're not going to be around for those things. We're going to be in heaven during that seven-year period. And so what happens with the church, those who have accepted Christ and are saved? The trumpet sounds. The rapture takes place. The events of the Great Tribulation unfold on earth. Simultaneously, the judgment seat of Christ is the uh, major event that transpires in heaven while the tribulation is unfolding here on earth. And so today I want to look at uh, really what uh, the Bible has to say about the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, we should be ready for that. If Christ can come back at any time, and we truly believe that there's nothing holding back his return, he may come back uh, today. We could very well be standing at the judgment seat of Christ today. We could be standing at the judgment seat of Christ at any moment. And so I think it's important that we know what's involved, and are we ready, and are we prepared, and uh, are we um, doing what we need to do and, and uh, fixing the things we need to fix before we stand at the judgment seat of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 10, I want to read a few verses. Uh, there's several passages in the Corinthians, uh, uh, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, that uh, talk about the judgment seat of Christ, uh, as well as, of course, the book of Revelation and so forth. But 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 10, According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth there, thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is in Christ Jesus. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. Notice the difference there. There's a divide. There's gold, silver, and precious stones, and then there's wood, hay, and stubble. Verse 13, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. The fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Paul is encouraging and uh, really trying to hold the uh, Corinthian church responsible here as he's reminding them. Paul says, it begins in verse number 10 there, he said, I've, I've built a foundation, I've established a church, I've set an example, we've preached the gospel, we've taught the doctrines. He said, now other people are going to come along and continue to build on that. And, and we have now for some 2,000 years, built upon those foundations laid in the first century church. But Paul reminds them that what we're doing is to be, do, is to be done for Christ. Uh, are we building and laying up treasure of gold, silver, and precious stones? Or are we laying up wood, hay, and stubble? Uh, the trial, according to Paul, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, is by fire. In other words, as we stand before Christ, are the things that we have done of eternal consequence? And are we doing them with the right heart and with the right motive? Are we doing them for Christ? Or are we doing things in the flesh? And we do, Are we doing things for personal accolades, uh, for personal benefit? And if so... Uh, those things will, will not hold the test of time. They will not stand up at the judgment seat of Christ. They will be uh, burnt. Uh, they, they will have no eternal reward. 
uh, if we have done that which we are to do for Christ, uh, that we will receive a crown of righteousness. We will receive a crown uh, for that which we have done uh, that is of eternal reward. And so the judgment seat of Christ, very important to understand, the judgment seat of Christ is not a judgment of sin. Uh, it has sometimes been portrayed in the past that we're going to stand before Christ and all of our sins will be revealed and all of our hidden thoughts will be made known. That This is not what this judgment seat is about. The judgment seat of Christ is to reveal that which we have done for Christ. Uh, did we do it uh, with the right heart? Did we do it with the right motives? Did we do it for him? Or did we do it for personal benefit? Uh, we're looking at motives here. Uh, we're looking at uh, using our... Um, our gifts for the Lord? Do we use our spiritual gifts for him or are we doing it for, for personal gain? Or do we ignore it? Do maybe we hit our spiritual gifts under a rock and never used it, uh, never pulled it out. God gave us opportunities that we never took. And uh, this is where we'll have to stand before Christ and give an account for that which we did or didn't do for the cause of Christ. Uh, if we are saved, we're at this judgment. Um, this is not a judgment to determine our salvation. Uh, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Likewise, at the rapture, those who are saved are in heaven. So we're already there. This is not determining whether or not we're going to get there. Uh, this is determining the reward that we receive once we are there. The word here that uh, is used in the uh, Greek is bima. It's a bima seat. It's a place of reward, honor, and authority. So the judgment seat of Christ is a place of reward. It's a place where we do uh, give an account for that which we did for Christ. Uh, it's a reward um, that's associated with the resurrection. Luke 14, 14 talks about that, that as we are resurrected there in heaven with Christ, uh, we stand to give an account for that which we did. We also know that in Revelation 19, 8, we see uh, ample evidence that Christ returns to earth at the end of the tribulation time with a rewarded bride. And so, by that, we can determine the, the timing, our timing, of when the judgment seat of Christ takes place. And so, while events, again, are transpiring upon the earth during the Great Tribulation, we're standing at the judgment seat of Christ uh, with the Lord. The subjects, of course, here at the judgment seat of Christ are the believers. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the entire chapter gives more detail on this very subject. And we know, obviously, it's the believers. This is not, again, uh, saved or unsaved, the sheep and the goats. All those are different things. Uh, this is the judgment of the believers, and the works that they did, whether or not they were for Christ uh, or whether they were done in the flesh. There's a number of crowns that are given, and I want to take an entire... Uh, session here to talk about the crowns. And so I'm not going to get into those. We're going to break them down. There's five specific crowns that the scripture talks about. We're going to give them uh, added due as we get to those and uh, give a whole session just to each of those. It's so important. Uh, if we're to be striving for the reward, then we better know exactly what we're striving for, how to earn it, and what we could do to mess that up. And uh, the Bible is very specific. God doesn't hide those things from us. He gives us great detail on those. And we're going to look at those in a session uh, ahead. Uh, we'll talk more about the judgment seat of Christ as it interweaves with some of the other events and facts. But I wanted to take the time today to talk about what exactly the judgment seat of Christ is. So important that we understand. We could be standing there to give an account uh, before Christ at any time. And uh, I think it's important that we know um, what to expect before we get there.